And so now we look at EPO. <clears throat> and EPO is a hormone which is secreted by the kidneys in response to chronic hypoxia. It stimulates the maturation of the red blood cells in the bone marrow, thereby increasing oxygen delivery to muscles, thereby enhancing sports performance. Results show that EPO concentration results, it increased by 24%, which peaked at three hours after a final breath hold. So here was looking at the effects of breath holds in generating EPO. So we already looked at spleen contraction, and the second part is you can also increase EPO, so it's having a double effect. It peaked at three hours after the final breath hold, and I have a feeling that here we did, they did five breath holds. Usually in the trials, it's five breath holds. But you can verify it. the references there. You can check it. You can check it yourselves there. And two hours later, it returned back to normal. And there's very little evidence looking at EPO. So what I did was I looked at the papers with patients with obstructive sleep apnea. So obstructive sleep apnea is involuntary holding the breath during your sleep and it's usually collapse of the, the upper airways. So they found that EPO was higher in patients who were holding their breath during their sleep. But the same effect is going to be if you're holding your breath during waking hours. And when the person with obstructive sleep apnea went on the CPAP machine, their EPO levels returned to normal because the goal of the CPAP is to remove the breath holding. And in this paper here, it's another paper looking at severe, or it's looking at obstructive sleep apnea. And they found that there was a 20% increase in EPO in patients with severe obstructive sleep apnea, which decreased following treatment. So as soon as you put the individual on a CPAP, which kept the airways open through a splint, um, the person wasn't holding their breath, so EPO levels dropped. So breath holding increases EPO. So from 20 to 24 percent.